Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 254. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my college website link and you can download the workbook Excel Magic Trick 252 to 260. Hey, in this trick here, we want to see how to use a one variable data table. This is a great example of how data tables can be much more efficient than doing formulas. Now in our trick 253, we did a simple one variable. This one's going to be a little bit more complex. Here's our situation. We have an income statement and we have some variables down here. We're going to build our little income statement and then we want to see at different um, units sold how our sales, variable cost, contribution, margin uh, change. So let's build our little income statement and we'll see how to make a huge what if table using a one variable data table. Hey, our sales are going to be uh, the units and I'm going to lock that times my uh, price per unit. I'm going to lock this going down. The reason why I locked it is because if you scroll down just a little bit, you can see that variable cost is right there. So we want units. When the formula is copied down, it'll move to variable cost in the assumption table. That's why a lot of times if you set up your assumption tables um, thinking um, in advance of how everything's structured, uh, you save a lot of time. Control Enter. That keep, puts the formula in the cell and keeps the cell highlighted, and then I'll click and drag it down one. Hey, it looked like it got rid of that formatting, and I'm going to point to the smart, smart tag and say fill without formatting. Ooh, look at that. By the way, if the line is put in this cell on the bottom, it goes away. If it's put on the top of this cell, it won't go away when you copy it down like that. Now, contribution margin will say equals our sales minus our variable costs and we should get uh, 81,550. Fixed costs, I'm going to say equals. I think I have a fixed cost right there. And finally, we have uh, net income equals contribution margin minus our fixed cost. Now, uh, let's do total cost because we're going to uh, plot this over here too. Equals fixed plus uh, a variable. Got 147,700. All right, now um, we want to come over here and we want to um, basically calculate all these numbers at all sorts of different units sold. Data table, very efficient to do this. Now, how does a data table work? The way the data table works is since we're going to vary one variable in all these formulas, and basically all these formulas are based on what? This uh, number of units sold. So you list all of your units sold. You can list them in um, a row or a column of uh, cells. I'm going to list these in a column of cells. So we'll put the units like start unit 5,000, then 6,000, 7,000. So that's required for a data table. Then you have to put all the formulas you want to um, substitute that unit variable um, in with whatever values are here. And then our data table will uh, be the guts, and that's the automatic part. This one's hard to do, and actually in the Beauty of Excel video I did, we did different formulas in each one of these columns and copied them down. And in fact, we did all the way to total costs. All right, let's build our variables first. And over, I'm going to say equals, and here I started the units at 1,000. Then I'm going to hit Enter. So I have 1,000 there. And then I'm going to say, oh, actually, we'll start at 0. So equals the zero number. And then here we'll do a formula equals the one above plus our increment. So we'll increment up by 1,000. And I'll lock that by hitting the F4 key twice because I'm going to copy it down and I want it locked. Control Enter. Now I'm going to click and drag. And now I have all of my uh, variable units. The one we calculated out was this. All right, now. Um, Let's put our formulas up here. We've already calculated them, so I'm going to use formulas equals that one, and I'm going to hit tab. The variable cost formula equals this variable cost right here, and then I'll hit tab. The contribution margin, I'll say equals, and click on this contribution margin, tab. The net income, I'll say equals, uh, there's the net income right there, tab. And finally, we have total cost equals. And that's this one over here, tab. So now we have our basic setup for a data table. 
our formulas are listed across the top, and the variable we want to substitute in to each one of these is going to be listed in this column. Now, here's the trick. If these formulas are not using the original uh, units variable, then it won't work. Let's just click in here and um, hit the F2 key for Range Finder. Notice how this one's looking there. OK, but it doesn't look like it's looking there, so I'm going to click Escape. And then I'm going to click here and hit F2. Oh, we can see that this formula is using that original unit sold. So it's using it there, but then this formula is using this one. So indirectly, this formula is using that. And every single one of these formulas has to have that true. So I'm going to hit F2. That one's using that one, so I'll click here. I clicked Escape, and then I'll click here and hit F2. Now that one's using the 5,000. Contribution margin, if we think about it, it's using this one, but it's using these formulas, which are um, using the units. So in turn, every single one of these are using those units. The total cost is from the variable cost using that units. If that is not true, that all of the formulas at the top are using that original variable, the data table won't work. Not only that, but the fact that we have so many formulas is what makes the data table so awesome here. So we have our variables. We have our formulas here. I'm going to highlight. And I keep this cell. In some earlier versions, there was trouble when this cell had something in it. So, And I haven't tested in the 2007, but I always keep this cell blank. Notice I put the, the, the uh, name for this column up over there. I'm going to highlight that. Blank formulas, variables. Zoop and a bunch of blanks in the middle of the guts of the tables. Now we can go over to, in 2007, data, and then what if, and data table. In 2003, you go to the data menu and table. Now it's asking for one of two things. And the way I remember this is there's a row input and a column input. I always um, see the variable we're substituting. Notice it's in a column here. So that's the memorization trick I use to remember, oh yeah, they, they want we're, to, we're substituting these, so I have to put something here in this column input cell. If these variables were set up across the top, then we'd say row. Now, what does it need here? It needs the original variable that all these formulas are using. And so I click there, boop, and that's it. You click OK, and your whole table is done. It, it, in, and it's an array. If you click here and look up here, you can see it's a table uh, array function. It's got two arguments. We use the second one, the column one, and it's got the little curly brackets which are automatically put in. By the way, if you try to delete one of the formula, it says you cannot change part of a table, a data table. Um, arrays are like that. When they're entered in as an array, you can't change. If you either have to delete them all or you can't just delete one. So there it is, a great example for uh, data tables when you have lots of formulas saves lots of time. All right, when we come back in our next one, we'll see a two-variable table uh, for trick 255. All right, see you next trick.